All right, solubility curves. Um, from the video, you should know how to read them, but I was gonna go over a couple examples here with your practice. Notice in the graph, you have substance A, B, C. A is the solid line, B is the little dotted line, and C is the dashed line. Um, each of these is representing a different substance and based on temperature, how much of that substance will be dissolved in water. So look at number one, what substance is the most soluble at zero degrees? So at zero degrees, most soluble means it will dissolve the most. So which one is the highest at zero? So I'll look up, it's the dashed line in that substance C. Uh, which substance is most soluble at 100 degrees? So if you look at 100, follow the graph up to the graph that has the highest mark. That is the solid line, which is substance A. Now, if it's asking for grams, like in number two, how many grams of substance B will dissolve in 100 grams of water at 60 degrees Celsius? If you look here, solubility, this is already in 100 grams per water. So you, you don't need to worry about that number. So I want to find substance B. I want to go to 60 degrees. And I am going to see where the line crosses at 60 degrees. All right, I'm gonna put a dot there. And when I look over here at my scale, zero, 20, 40, it's going up by 20s. So in between, the line in between zero and 20 is 10. Between 20 and 40 is 30. So this um, line here is just barely over the 50. So you could put approximately 50 grams. So that's how you will do this solubility graph um, here. So you're gonna read this and um, read the graph. It's either gonna be asking for a temperature, a substance, or a gram. Um, so let's look at number three. Which substance shows the least change in solubility from zero to 100? Well, the least change is gonna be the straightest line. And so if, um, you can do it mathematically, or you can, this one's easy to look at. So you would start with the given Sub, uh, grams, so I think it's gonna be substance B. So I'm gonna do some math to see. It starts with 40 grams, and then at 100, it's right at 60. If I subtract, it's um, just a 20 gram difference. Well, if I look at substance A, I have 20 at the beginning, I have 80. There's a 60 gram difference, so that is not, it's not substance A. If I look at C, we start off with um, almost 50, so I'm gonna say about 48, and it goes, and it actually decreases to about 28. So if I subtract this, there is a 20, ooh, it's about the same as um, substance C, the change from beginning to end but you wanna see which one has the straightest line, and that would actually be substance B between B and C. And so that's how you're gonna answer these questions on this first practice. You're gonna have a lab, um, a virtual lab, and if you, when you fill in this chart here in the virtual lab, if you put, enter this in the data chart or um, data table in the lab and then click graph, it will actually graph it for you. And you can, if you look at the directions here, you can screenshot it and on your computer, I believe it automatically puts it in your downloads. Then you can go in Kami and when you click on the image, you can say upload from computer and you can upload the image and put it in place here so you don't have to try to graph this using the Kami tools. 
Um, when you get finished with that part, um, just some more practicing here of reading solubility. So notice you've got a lot of different graphs here and they're labeled with their chemical formula on each line here. Um, so it's gonna be just like the other one. You're going to um, read the question and figure out which lines it's uh, talking about. And then you're going to um, answer the solubility based on this. Notice that this, they don't put solubility here, but it's still the same thing. It's just grams of solute per 100 grams of water. That's the definition of solubility versus temperature. And notice they stretch this graph out by putting all the increments up here. Um, so you're going to, um, got a couple questions to answer here. Notice that for the first substance, solubility increases as temperature increases. As discussed earlier, solutions involving liquids and solids, typically more solute can be dissolved at higher temperatures. Can you find any exceptions? So when it means this, typically your graph should be going in an upward motion. So if there's a graph that's not following this pattern right here, going upward from left to right, then that is an exception. So you would put that chemical symbol here. Here's an example of how to read the graph. Find the curve for case CLO3. So that's right here, this graph right here. You are going to, it says at 30 degrees, so at 30 degrees, approximately 10 grams will dissolve. So if I go to 30 degrees, and notice right here it is on the 10 grams. If the temperature is 80, so if I go over here to 80, approximately how many? So I'm gonna follow this line up, my 80 line, to where K, it intersects with KCL03 and I'm gonna look across and it's 40, so 40 grams. Um, <clears throat> then you're gonna look here and we've got the same thing. So you're just finding the mass. So go to this temperature, follow uh, for this substance, see where the line intersects at that temperature and so forth. Then you get here to types of solution. Um, you can, we've got unsaturated, supersaturated solutions. And so you want to try to fill these in. You may need to Google this. And then you're gonna answer these questions here on whether they're supersaturated, saturated, unsaturated. So saturated means they hold, it's gonna fall on the line, on the line. Unsaturated will be below the line and supersaturated is up above the line. Um, that's how you can tell on the graph. Um, so you want to answer these right here and then attempt to answer these questions here um, through number five. If you have any questions, please um, contact me, um, email, um, text me via Remind. Um, we can do a Google Meet. I'm here until probably about three today, 3.15. Um, and then um, we have our Google Meets for tomorrow that you can also ask.